There we go. When you connect, when you push the connect button twice, it disconnects and then connects again. I mean, it disconnects, but then you press it a third time. Welcome to the Greasy Conversation <laughs> Show. Press the connect button a third time if you press it. Only an odd number of times. An even number of times is no good. So once, three times, even five times has been attempted, and that's within tolerances. But that's how we get Only to where we are numbers, now. Though. Oh, <laughs> we'd never get started if I had to find prime numbers each time. But like, I mean, like maybe the first couple I got. Yeah. So, joining us today is Josh Cohen. Hi. Hi. I feel like I'm doing this twice because I'm speaking into the mic for the lovely people listening in on the radio show and yet also speaking into a camera for the Facebook live feed. So I, should I repeat everything that I say just to make sure that both audiences get it? No, it's so I feel be. like I'm doing everything twice because you have a microphone for the live <laughs> radio audience and yet a camera for the Facebook live audience. So should I repeat everything twice so both audiences get what I'm saying? Yes. Definitely do that every time. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but it has to be verbatim okay. or it won't work. It'll crash again if you don't use exactly the same words. <laughs> <laughs> See how many times in the show we can get you to do that take. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to dish it out face. sparingly. How many of the episodes are going to begin with me talking about one of the things I did to start the episode? And <laughs> this instance all, clicking all of them? A, yeah. Mm. I feel like all of them have been that way. As long as there's this. It's time. I didn't realize <laughs> you had a sound effect board. Yeah, I got to. You it's got like... one that goes boing, boing, boing. <laughs> mm. <Wow. laughs> what yeah. about... Boop, 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 boop. Wait for it. Oh, it's pretty much a lot of those at different lengths. <laughs> just atmospheric explosion just, sounds. Just different, yeah. <laughs> different movie suspenseful. production company soundtracks. Yeah. I like how that one has footsteps. <laughs> Is that like the Law and Order thing? You know. Oh, could be. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. That's so, not Law and Order. Really? That's Isn't one it? of those. Dum, dum. Oh, oh, what is the one I'm doing there? Uh, order in law. That was order in law. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Easy mistake. Yeah. Spin off. Big game this weekend. Did you guys tune into the. That huge, amazing competition yeah. that the world got together for? It was really riveting, I have to say. I'm sure we all know yeah. we're talking about the puppy bowl. Fur and nails flying everywhere. <laughs> Do they have, like, separate teams? They do, uh, but it's the same teams every year, so it simplifies oh, things, unlike yeah. other sporting competitions. Yeah. Are team, they, are... team Fluff versus Team Tough or Rough? <laughs> team Rough. I think that makes more rough. sense, yeah. Fluff versus Rough, I want to say. Nice. Are they like, is each team comprised of the same breed of dog? No, it's all different breeds. Um, so that's whack. All um, shelter animals that are well, up that's for beautiful. adoption. Not at the time of the game. They're usually adopted out before the game even airs. <laughs> and usually the game concludes with a, a reel on what happened to the dogs that you were watching compete. Yeah. Like what families they ended up in and, or if they died. Well, this sounds like a... <laughs> <laughs> they throw that into... Yeah. The in, in memoriam reel like at the yeah, Grammys. How many of them got concussions and are just forever brain damaged? Yeah. yeah. We don't, this we seems don't like an awesome that, way but... to get human orphans into homes. We just battle yeah. them. The orphan bull? Yeah, orphan <laughs> yeah. bull. If we fought our uh, unclaimed children in this nation, mm -hmm. they would have a much better success. Well, they don't situation. necessarily have to fight. They would just have to chase a ball around and tackle yeah. each other. Same thing. Just give them weapons, though. It makes it a little yeah. more interesting. At least, like, padded weapons, like American Gladiator style. Mm -hmm. I'd adopt the <laughs> shit out of some kids if I got to see them gladiate. Gladiate? Yeah. Is that a real word? <laughs> <laughs> when gladiators do what they yeah. do, I assume they're gladiating. Mm. And I think our children should gladiate as well for our love. That would, that would actually be cool, like pitting orphans up against American gladiators for adoption. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, the we, orphans versus the gladiators. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. None of us have children, but we should make these decisions about other people's yeah. children. Yeah, totally. And none of us should ever have children based on <laughs> some Probably. of these conversations. Yeah, most definitely. So, so, what we're doing today is really culturally significant. Oh, wait, I also wanted to mention, before we move on from this puppy bowl, what were the two ga- teams that were competing against each other? It was uh, Team Fluff versus Team Rough. Now so We just glossed over this, but these teams... Never in the history of sports that I'm familiar with have the two teams that were in the final battle had their names rhyme. Probably true. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. What was your example earlier? Like, we've never seen Patriots and Matriots? Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Um, but if I may speak about the Puppy Bowl at length... Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to spend for the most duration of the, of the show. Yeah. Um, it was an exciting game. Um, I'm a little disappointed that Team Rough didn't pull it out at the end. It was a nail-biter. Um, they were pretty <laughs> close. Most points, I believe, ever scored in a puppy bowl <laughs> in the entire 14 years that they, um, they've been ho- hosting this wonderful event. So um, it's, really, it's really progressing it, as it, a sport. It, really, it, it, it progresses, however progressive. The car insurance company was not one of the sponsors. <laughs> it was Geico this year. And Geico did a fantastic job renovating the uh, Puppy Bowl Arena, which was brand new just for this game. Um, so kudos to Geico and uh, Purina and all the other wonderful sponsors. However, um, I have some issues with how the Puppy Bowl ended up coming out. Um, Team Rough, I, I believe, was robbed. Um, oh, yeah? It, it, you know, there were some calls that the... Not the umpire, um, the uh, Ref. referee. See how much I know about sports. Um, <laughs> referee. Th- there, was, th- there was a referee and an assistant referee. The assistant referee, first time in the Puppy Bowl history, was a sloth. An actual sloth <laughs> hanging from a, a, a fake tree n- near the, uh, the, play, the field of play. How did we discern the calls of this referee? Um, well, the primary referee would interpret the decisions of the assistant referee, which in and of itself didn't really make much sense, uh, just on a uh, hierarchical standpoint. Um, so Team Rough, I believe, should have come home with the trophy. But, you know, Team Fluff, they did a game. Um, they played well, played hard. Um, as far as the MVP, Most Valuable Pup Selection, is concerned, I really feel that Jennifer Parents should have taken it home. Uh, Jay Paw. As they refer oh, to her God. throughout the game, um, was, that, was that an actual dog? Actual dog. Oh, wow. um, I forget the breed, but um, she scored two touchdowns in the first quarter for Team Rough, which is really impressive. I, um, how do they score touchdowns in the Puppy Bowl? Well, there's the the field of play. Yeah. The um, uh, what is the football term for that? The uh, uh, rectangle. The, the, the green rectangle. Yeah. The lined rectangle. Yeah. And um, incremented s- rectangle, I think s- they call it. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Um, and scattered about the green rectangle, the field of play are toys, dog toys. And whenever a participating contestant in the match grabs a dog toy and proceeds to carry that dog to- toy to the end of either field. <laughs> signifies a touchdown. So many which, times they don't even realize they're scoring necessarily. No, they don't realize anything. The dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but if they carry a toy to either side of the rectangle, they the score dogs, six or seven points. I don't know how it works. No yeah. training. Yeah. They haven't even had like a lifespan for training. No, either. these are orphan dogs. <laughs> they, they're street Dog dogs. Children, they they, yeah. had, they had rough lives. They. <laughs> They don't have the privilege of, Education. you know, adopted <laughs> pure breed dogs that can go to school sports programs or little league or <laughs> things of that nature. They're just doing their best, yeah. <laughs> but they're all very good boys and girls. I love it. Little dog boys and girls. Mm-hmm. So yeah, puppy bowl. Um, wait, there we go. Whoa, that was pretty jarring. <laughs> yeah. 
That's how we work here. Well, not as jarring as when I had the clacker, like for movie time, mm-hmm. like a, like the clacky board. That's the official term, right? Clacky board, yeah. Yeah, we were so enamored with it. It was truly mostly me that there was just clacking through the whole episode, which actually the mics pick up really well anywhere in the room that's going on, and children crying. That I would say, if we were ranking episodes, is our worst episode. What, was that all the same episode? <laughs> yes, probably. Yeah. There's a lot of children crying are, and clacking. Are, are they related? The clacking and the children crying. Sometimes it was children clacking. Oh, okay. And crying at the same time. Just crying clacking? and clacking this oh. thing. Why are you making me clack? <laughs> and I was encouraging this somehow. I learned a lot that episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel every episode we're learning and growing. Perfect example of that is we've got a new mixer. It's actually our old mixer, but I got a new power supply. So Old Faithful here is back. Let's have a round for the mixer coming back. Yay! She's back. But um, I didn't... That's right. Calm down. I didn't uh, really set it up much before the show as far as like the... So in the middle of something you were saying, like the EQ totally changes because I didn't realize where the button... You know when you're moving a bunch of sliders? How is my EQ? I think I'm affecting EQ. I'm doing it right. I'm affecting that EQ. And meanwhile, the button that makes the EQ like in, that wasn't pushed. I wasn't doing anything. Are you capturing the chocolatey bass tones in my voice? Oh, let's... You know, I've got a setting for that. Let's up the chocolate. I want to... Do a little little quality control here. Normally I cut a lot of bass from vocals. hello. But no, I, I need more bass for sure. Let's chocolate let's, you up. Yeah, come on. If we're taking a moment for chocolate, let's take a moment for chocolate. Yeah, ooh, ooh. Right? Ooh. Let's learn yeah, and grow this, together. This is nice. I, know, <laughs> I like this. I May it. I um, perhaps uh, give a, a kind word to one of our valued sponsors? I uh, encourage it. To test this uh, wonderful EQ that we have going? Okay. We're going to test the growth and progress of our station as an ever-changing entity increasing in value together with this advertisement now. This is an advertisement that a sponsor has given us money to say and also given us much of their product. In fact, this sponsor has given us a whole jug of their product that we've rolled around lathering ourselves in graciously. Mm. And that sponsor is Spunk Lube. Spunk Lube is award-winning personal lubricant that feels great on your skin. It's glycerin-free non-staining, and 100% sex toy safe with all materials! Yeah! All caps. All materials. Plastic, rubber, silicone, wicker, corduroy, (laughs) um, sandpaper. Finally, a lubricant that doesn't disintegrate my wicker dildo. Yeah. If if I had a nickel. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like furniture. You don't put regular furniture outside on the lawn Mm -hmm. to just get all faded and torn up. That's where wicker goes. Yeah, Wicker excels in the backyard, and I think it can excel within each of us. Literally, within each of us. (laughs) And it's it's lightweight. It's affordable. (laughs) It um, looks great outdoors, like you say. Available for in many the um, voyeuristic among us. <laughs> but anyway, to continue about spunk lube. Non staining. Non staining, yeah. I, I don't want to just gloss over that non staining thing. Oh, I, I see what you did there. Because gloss. Lube, not only, the, really, to break it down, lube. The, the advantage of this lubricant is that it resembles semen. And when you're in a situation where you need lubricant, it's also regularly a situation where however much semen is there, it's not enough. It, it, by the it time, really never is enough. No. By the time that there's semen visible even, m- most of the excitement's over anyway. And if you're excited to see semen, mm-hmm. oftentimes it's too late. So you can begin right away with experiencing what you want to experience without staining everything like semen does. Yeah. It's like semen right up front. Right, exactly. You can front load. Up front, up back, wherever you need it. And then you have something you feel like you can compete against. That's the thing, the lack of competition otherwise. Like an A-B focus group test (laughs) sort of arrangement. When there's already a bunch of semen everywhere, Mm -hmm. you're like, well, hey, I'm ready to join the party. That's something that uh, encourages me to contribute my own. Where if you're the, the first... 
to get any semen anywhere, it's a lot more awkward. Yeah. It's, it's really the great American melting pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but our kind folks at um, Spunk Loop have a special offer that I would like to share with you all. Oh, shit. Yeah. If you order three bottles of Spunk Lube Hybrid pure silicone, natural or pink, for the ladies. And you will get the two bottles for free. But you have to mention Radio Vegas Rocks in the coupon code. I'm going to read that sentence one more time. Order three bottles of Spunk Lube Hybrid pure silicone, natural or pink, and you will get the two bottles for free. But you have to mention Radio Vegas Rocks in the coupon code and i just have to say that spunk lube they saved my life they, it, it, they i would not be here today if it weren't for spunk lube it saved your life i'd like to know the scenario in which your life was either in grave danger or perfectly safe depending on whether or not you had this lubricant but i just i like to leave it for the viewer, that there are train tracks involved, and damsels, hmm. plural. <laughs> it, not quite, but we'll talk about it a after the show. <laughs> we'll be drawing pictures, even mm -hmm. illustrations. Mm -hmm. That sound means you just won best guest this season. Oh my goodness! That's all it takes is read a commercial well. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> That's how low the standards have been. But that also means there's less pressure on the rest of the show. You can just fuck up the whole rest of it. You've oh, set yeah, such okay. a good standard. Well, later, guess. But yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was good enough. All right, Full bye. effects. <laughs> All right. What else we got in the docket? We've got totally hella space news oh, in bro. that I three rockets wanted... strapped together didn't blow up. I know. <laughs> Not only that, but we have a new guest. It's leave. Josh Cohen. We have him as a guest. Oh, you switched the thing. Uh oh. You know, we forgot to warn you. When you switch the phone with that microphone, sometimes it makes the sound stop working. Oh, really? Here, switch it back. Last time we did that. switch it back. Oh. Okay. Whew, they fixed it. Yeah, when we used to use this same setup in a car, uh, we would try to switch it to just be fun and be like, hey, look at where we're driving. Now look mm -hmm. back at us. And then every time, I think it has to do with a 24-bit versus 16-bit or like the recording rate of like 44 or something. But it would switch back and it would sound underwater and like weirdly half speed, like we were slow monsters for the whole rest of the episode every time we did that. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem? <laughs> I didn't think so. But people are like, what the fuck's going on? And we're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I don't know. We don't know there's... Wait, wait, hold on. People watch this? <laughs> a few, yeah. yeah. It's primarily Once in a while. for our unborn children that we'll probably never have. Oh. But, eh, that's Thanks an to Spunk Lube. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Just popping them out. Is Spunk Lube spermicidal? Not enough. So. No. Not nearly enough. <laughs> not nearly no. enough. Ask okay. my children. Hmm. Not nearly. Not nearly enough. No. But Falcon Heavy, were you psyched about Falcon Heavy, Josh? Falcon Heavy? Falcon Heavy, were you fucking Is that, is that an waiting? overweight bird of prey? <laughs> it's named after one, yes. Oh. But, uh, you had SpaceX, or our buddy oh, Elon. Oh, oh. I didn't know that it had a name. I just yeah. thought it was a rocket. The, the big one. Or Starman. <laughs> or, um, so you saw the Starman thing? I saw the Starman thing. <sighs> I, I, I shed a tear to that. I didn't. I loved it. Whenever inanimate objects do amazing things, mm -hmm. I'm like, yay, my cold well, mechanical it, it heart It didn't is do touched. it on its own. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the brave little toaster. Don't pop my bubble, man. <laughs> right. The brave little toaster made me cry so many times. Yeah, but that's an example of an inanimate object doing incredible things. Yeah. On its own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you notice that what it said on the screen on the dashboard? What did it say? It said, don't panic, which is a Douglas uh, Adams yeah, reference. Yeah. So, I don't know. After all this sending stuff into space mm -hmm. with uh, 
I don't know. I feel like space has been made cooler now that it's referencing something that I thought was cool in high school, which was the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm-hmm. and the, the and just anyone taking their old car and putting it in space because they can. It could have been like a chunk of cement. They had to have a test load. And did you know the test load for the Dragon capsule, the first crew capsule that they put out there, was a wheel of cheese as a Monty Python reference? So they're just shooting up random <laughs> junk in the space? Yeah, when it's a rocket they think is probably going to blow up anyway, uh-huh. they put random junk in it. But this one <laughs> it actually worked exactly like they expected yeah. it to. Huh. Imagine that. Yeah. it's really. If only life were that simple. <laughs> if only more things. Yeah. I mean, I think if only more things were like rockets where people just expected your first try to be bogus. I mean, we need that with this show. Yeah. It's never going to be as good any one episode as it will be in future episodes. It's true. Yeah. It often blows up. <laughs> Catastrophically. There's been yeah. fires. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of possibility of fire, today we have a cooking show for once ever. Finally, on a uh. broadcast that's primarily audio-based, we're going to make something that's primarily for looking and tasting at. Mm. Well, when I heard that I would be on the season, season, season finale, now, now, season, season, finale, <laughs> the season finale of long audio. Yeah, and then another one. I just okay, cool. <laughs> when I heard that I would be on the season finale of your fantastic show, I wanted to do something very special, not only for you. And not only for you, and not only for all of you watching out there in Facebook Live Land and listening on Radio Vegas Rocks. Which is already over 20 people. Already over 20 people listening? Well, no, right just now. looking. Just I don't know if watching. they're really listening. I don't know if they can oh. even hear us. Yeah, though, so they can hear us too. Oh, okay, good. I don't we're know we're the not stats underwater. Of the people. No. <laughs> That's the Facebook feed. There's probably around that many on the audio. Oh, too. nice. I don't know how that Well, I wanted live. to do something special. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> Wanted to do something special for everybody. So I figured what better way to say thank you to my lovely hosts and to demonstrate a certain je ne sais quoi to the people that may be meeting me for the first time out there in Facebook Live Land and Radio Land than by perhaps preparing a little culinary delight that may enlighten the senses my senses are dumb I need to enlighten them or perhaps educate the unwashed masses (laughs) on uh, basic (laughs) cookery baking specifically let's do it yeah let's do it huh any opportunity to insult any opportunity all right let's (laughs) let's get it going I don't mean unwashed in a bad way (laughs) Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's okay. No, we constantly call everyone. them the proletariat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just insult right. everyone. How are we doing? They like it. Can it's I be seen? Can I be heard? Hella seen. Hella Mostly. seen, hella heard. Hella heard, even. Mostly pets. Can you say hello on the radio? <laughs> not normally. Not in terrestrial radio. That's why we've ab- uh, abandoned that. So this is extraterrestrial radio? Hell yeah, <laughs> it is. We're in a spaceship right now, man. You're so easy to make yeah. That's great. All right. So Low standards. Welcome to the Greasy Conversation Cooking Hour. My name is Joshua Cohen. Thank you so much for joining us. What we are going to prepare today is a delightful oatmeal cranberry cookie. It has a few surprises inside that will make a tremendous impact on the flavor that you will eventually come to discover upon tasting the finished product. Let's get started. Oh no, there's stuff you haven't told me. I should have anticipated this. Let's crack. (laughs) All right, that's the wrong bowl. This is the right bowl. To start, you're gonna want a medium-sized mixing bowl and the following ingredients. One and a half cups of rolled oats. Three-fourths a cup of flour. One teaspoon of garam masala, 
Are you guys familiar with garam masala? Isn't that's that... That's a Indian seasoning? Indeed. It is a North Indian spice mix. Primarily cinnamon, uh, coriander, clove, pepper. Oh, well, you could have just of... named all the stuff I've heard of that's, that's in it. It's fucking delicious. <laughs> it is. That's all you it need is. to know. Oh, okay. And uh, some baking soda and salt. Just a little bit. Half a teaspoon. So these are our dry ingredients, and we're going to want to mix these in the medium-sized bowl. And you know what? There's really nothing better than warm cookies on a nice February evening, wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Especially when the ingredients come in these nice uh, pre-measured plastic bags, which is the um, preferred way to dole out exact amounts of ingredients i have to point out that before the show i believe that was the part you were most excited about is that everything was pre-measured yes indeed i I came prepared some people just love pre-measurement so right now um since you can't see what i'm doing i'm adding all of these dry ingredients into the bowl the rolled oats approximately uh one and a half cups of the rolled oats uh the three-fourths cup flour, baking soda, and a little bit of salt, and the garam masala. Now, the garam masala is what's really going to take these oatmeal cranberry cookies to the next level. It's an unexpected spice that is typically found in more savory dishes, like your curries and your samosas and whatnot. I'm just naming random Indian dishes that come to mind. Would I be right <laughs> to say that this makes the cookies more umami? Sure. Ah. <laughs> I'll take it. I skipped a step. I need to put on an apron so I don't make a mess of myself. Yeah, we're right in that apron moment, you guys. Yeah. Put on your aprons at home All right. and can, give can, people can near you apron aprons. apron music? Please? Yes, for sure. Oops. <laughs> This is the apron song. That's right. It's also important if you're doing this at home to measure everything and put it in bags and then label it before you mix it. Yeah, single-use plastic bags are um, preferred when it comes to doing everything. Be sure to save all the bags so that later you can throw them into the ocean. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we have our dry ingredients in the bowl. We're just going to mix them up here. We're just, just get them to co-mingle. For anyone um, listening, that is some fine mixing right there. Yeah, I just have a regular spoon, just a, a spoon that you might find at your local uh, restaurant supply store. You know, nothing extravagant. Get it, get it all mixed up in there. All right, so we have one none of bowl. The stu- none of the spoons in your home might quite be it. It's definitely restaurant, yeah. restaurant supply store. Or, or you can go vintage if you want. Our next step is we are going to incorporate some wet ingredient. Oh, yeah. Duh. Tons. 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 All right. So for this, we are going to want to take a stick of butter that has been softened. Softened. Feel how soft that is. Can you attest to how soft that is? It's truly soft. (laughs) Is this an actual butter, Mr. Wallace? Oh, okay. Let's find out. Can I open it? Is this a magic trick? Oh yeah. Feel how soft this is. I can taste the inside oh, yeah. of the cows it came from. It looks like it to me. Mm. Wrong! It is vegan earth balance butter. Dang! Oh shit. Bamboozled. Wait. There we go. That was right to the standing one. But is it it is indeed soft. So that no part harm, is true. No foul. But now you've lied to us. I don't know what what else. I don't know if I can trust anything else about these cookies. So wait, what's the brand of that vegan butter again? I was really impressed. Spunk Lube. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. The award-winning personal lubricant and butter substitute that feels great on your skin and makes extra fluffy oatmeal cranberry cookies. Spunk Lube. All right, so we got our softened stick of butter and half a cup of brown sugar. What makes brown sugar brown was? Is you it, didn't know there would be a quiz portion here. I was hoping there would be. What makes brown sugar brown? Is it that brown it is sugar, not? <laughs> it needed to be said. Thank no. you. I'm, I'm glad you t- take every opportunity no. for puns. Yeah, brown I sugar has molasses in it, I believe. Oh, I was gonna say it's not bleached, but it, I think that's the difference between 
brown salt and regular salt, right? <laughs> rice. It's not bleached. Oh, rice. Right. I'm thinking brown of rice. rice and white rice. Possibly. <laughs> I think I was thinking about napkins. How the brown napkins are not bleached, but the white ones are. I mix up napkins and food all the time. Yeah, yeah. It, it happens they're near to the best food. Of us. You have napkins yeah. with food, mm-hmm. and, but they're so la- they lack flavor terribly compared to food. Yeah. That's where the garam masala comes in. <laughs> yeah. Makes napkins delicious. Yeah, and cookies. <laughs> now we're gonna proceed. We have our softened stick of, br- of butter and our brown sugar. We're gonna also add a fourth cup of regular bleached granulated table sugar or yeah. unbleached if you're oh. dangerous Ooh. Ooh, child. <laughs> all right so we got all that stuff in there and now we're gonna beat it Yay. yeah does that mean beating music are we licensed to do that all right so hopefully the butter is yeah oh yeah softened so nicely in my car on the way here we're just gonna beat this all together Some world class Martha Stewart beating right there. Yeah. This um, KitchenAid hand mixer is quite nice. Um, that if you have a standing mixer, also a, preferably a KitchenMaid, um, that will work tremendously. But the Are hand you saying mixer. KitchenAid or KitchenMaid? Both. Uh, KitchenAid. Okay. Yeah. Alright, now. Alright, so we, we beat those ingredients together. One cage free omega 3 loaded egg. Uh, How are extra omega time threes put in the There egg? are nine omega 3s. But are they just already in there? Are they fed to the chicken? How does this happen? Does the chicken make it uh, when it runs around? I believe it's so uh, a matter of. Time. I believe it's a matter of what the chickens are fed. Which then uh, impacts the omega-3 content of the eggs that they lay. Or they could be injected with fish solids. I don't know. That egg doesn't look very Smack injected. it on the table. That was an excellent crack. Thanks. I've, I've done this once or twice. Sorry to give you such a short applause for that. Or is that the backwards one? Oh, I discovered that I made a... There's a backwards applause. Oh. It's really fun. Sounds dirty. Right? Doesn't it sound wet? Yeah. <laughs> Any opportunity to discuss the backwards applause right. I take. So we added our egg into the butter-sugar mixture, and now we're just going to beat that in. With the kitchen aid. With the kitchen aid. And I at- wonder if Kitchen Maid is a brand. We should market kitchen that. Kitchen Maid. Wouldn't that just totally swipe some customers if we had Kitchen Maid mixers? Totally. Or like Minute Aid orange juice? Hmm. <laughs> There's there's some brown sugar that is clumpy. Because it's I'm not just... bleached. That's the problem. Bleach your sugar, you guys. Yeah. Go home and bleach, bleach, bleach everything. It. <laughs> just bleach everything in your house. Just All do right. it. So we You'll got... never get sick. Except with MRSA only. Now here's the fun part. We're going to take our wet ingredients. Uh, and we're going to add it to the wet ingredients. You always add the dry to the... Wet. Really? Not without spunk lube. Not without <laughs> spunk lube. It is important to is? take your dry dangalang <laughs> and coat it with the wonderful personal lubricant of the gods. Why and do you also add dry greasy to conversation. Wet? What ha- I appreciate that. What happens if you add wet to dry, though? Have you ever done that to be rebellious and shh? <laughs> just let it happen just let it happen right. so I'm learning I'm right learning now hard. for all of you out in the radio land hi my name's josh nice to meet you i am mixing all of these ingredients which is typically what cooking is <laughs> so I'm mixing them all together, and it's important to make sure that everything gets incorporated. There's, you want to scrape the sides of the bowl. You want to make sure that all those little dry bits of flour and rolled oats get incorporated into the main batter. Batter is a technical baking term that means the stuff that you mix together. <laughs> 
Um, at this point, you, you may want to add some uh, vanilla extract. I didn't bring my vanilla extract because I can't get the bottle open. We could true, pretend, true story. We could just true story. <laughs> opened it the way you opened the egg. Just crack it on the table and <laughs> spill vanilla extract everywhere. I don't think our hosts here at Radio Vegas Rocks would appreciate their studios smelling like vanilla as opposed to incense. That is something that the All best right. guests of the season would say, as opposed to previous guests with no qualms about spilling various liquids in every direction. Which brings us back to Spunk Lube. <laughs> <laughs> It's All not right. staining, though. You can just spill it on everything. It's fine. Yeah, non-staining. All right, so we have our mixed batter. Would you like to eat some cookie batter? Wow. Don't do it. It's salmonella. Oh, salmonella. yeah, because... No, but, but go ahead. But it's a free-range <laughs> egg, right? Yeah, but it's also been in my car for like an hour, so you may not want it. Thanks for we letting me pretend. inspect it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. All right, so we have this, and now what we want to do is get a baking sheet and some parchment paper. Is there any uh, particular measurement on that baking sheet there? This baking sheet is a medium. Oh. Um, but you can go small, you can go large. You can go extra large, depends on how much batter you make. Um, this recipe that I'm sharing with you today, you can use meth and um, figure out <laughs> how to make more or less of it, depending on how many cookies you want to make. Uh, it's all up to you. All right, so you're going to line your pan with parchment paper. Parchment paper is great for baking. It's also great for writing peace treaties, sonnets, um, who knows, a any number of old timey things. Those are the only two things I ever write yeah. down. Declarations of war. Yeah. Yes, indeed. With totally. cookies. <laughs> peace treaties and sonnets, that's it. <laughs> and at this point, you also will want to have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. 350. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I always have to write peace treaties with him always writing declarations of war. Yeah. It's pretty conflicting. Right. So, you're going to want to get one of your one of these uh, cookie scoopers, you know, kind of the ice cream style with a little swirly do that scoops the the bottom to make the perfect little lumps of nice. cookie batter. I this like that one, it's smaller than the ice cream one usually is. Yeah, this one uh, was actually giving me trouble last night. Am I right? Actually... Am I right, ladies? Am I Every right? night you're messing with the cookie scooper. Yes. But if, if it gives you some trouble, perhaps the little scoopy thing doesn't quite uh, doesn't quite work like it's not now. Just kind of smack it. Smack wow. the old smack the old swirly do around. Smack the swirly do. I never made cookies with a Get tool these. like that. It seems like yeah. such a good idea. Well, my cookies have always been all kinds of different random shapes, though. Yeah. As you can see, it, it just broke on me. But but still, it's a pro yeah. tool. You can just use it as a scoop. You don't have to necessarily have um, the swiper. spring action gizmos helping you. Julia Child didn't have any of that. No, she did not. No, she did not. Jacques Pepin didn't have any of that. Anthony Bourdain. I don't see any springy doos near him. Absolutely. Wow. Through this beautiful world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you got your cookies laid out approximately two inches apart because they're going to expand in the oven. You're going to put this in the oven, which is down here. Yeah. This place is riddled with ovens. Hmm. Good. Now, at this point, as I look beneath the, this counter here where I keep all my secret stuff, I realize that I've skipped a step. And that is... Oh, no. Cranberries! Oh, before you actually scoop, late. before you scoop the stuff into the baking pan, you're going to want to add some cranberries. But you can, you can poke About them into the top cup. of the baking pan ones too, right? You could. I'm not going to. We'll just do Make a batch sure the spring extra... from your swirly dude doesn't <laughs> go into the batter. doesn't taste that Whoever good. Whoever gets that cookie gets a prize. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got the spring right. cookie. <laughs> That's so, the prize. <laughs> so now you got your batter complete with cranberries. Delightfully tart. You can get them um, uh, at uh, any, um, any store like your Sprouts or your Whole Foods or Vons. Or even go right Win to Dixie. a cranberry store. 
Oh, yeah. Or, cranberry store. Or, you know, in, in these days, you can find high-quality cranberries online. Um, www.cranberry.com. Um, <laughs> not to be confused really... with cranberries.com, which, um, believe you me, you don't want to visit. <laughs> no, not at work. No, no, indeed. I feel really bad that we didn't talk about the singer from the Cranberries dying when we talked about other singers that we don't like as much dying on the show. Mm. But, I mean, she she passed away just right after we stopped deciding to talk about dead singers. So it was, like, horrible timing. But shout out to her friends and family. <laughs> anyway, with your cooking. I love the Cranberries. That's the thing. I mean this sincerely. I don't mean, you know, it's a bummer, but... Anyhow. And we also love cranberries and cookies. Yeah. Yes, this yes. is in honor of that, as I'm saying. I'm trying to dedicate this to her really clumsily. Clumsily indeed. <laughs> well, by now, your cookies have been sitting in a 350-degree oven for approximately five minutes. At this point, you're going to want to open the oven and flip them around to make sure that the um, cookies are baked evenly because some ovens you know they don't heat uh do you flip equally. them upside down so they get the flat time on no, both sides no oh. they, they get flat <laughs> that'd be kind of cool though right maybe that's not something anyone ever does no but it, it's worth a try right? and i invite our listeners to uh, give that a shot and <laughs> contact so... greasy conversation with the results of that experiment show they us can... pictures of your double flat cookies yeah please tag greasy conversation on instagram if you happen to bake a batch of these yourselves yeah. using wazi is um, experimental baking technique. And then double tag, the other tag is double flat. So hashtag greasy conversation, hashtag double flat, and then show us your double flat cookies. Mm. Mm, double flat. All right, it's been another five minutes. You're going to want to pull these bad boys out of the oven. It's starting to smell good. Gentlemen, I think we have a baked batch of cookies and judging from the facebook live feed you might not believe that there is an oven beneath this desk but in fact there is and also my baking pan has transformed into a pyrex container containing room temperature cookies that's fancy uh, oh, yes, i'm going to show the camera right now so you can see what the finished product will yeah look dive like. in on the camera uh in the facebook comments um the, the drummer from Bonnie Hunter Brothers says hi. Oh. Hey, dude. He also mentions that Let's Target has things available, too. That's We're naming true. stores. <laughs> That's not true. I doubt they have cranberries. Target doesn't actually sell things. <laughs> no. You guys there's have been Target, misled. There's like a, like a store, like a, like a grocery Target, though, I thought, sometimes. Maybe not. Never mind. Target isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to try a cookie? Desperately. I'm just gonna take the whole. All right. Let me try. Let me try one of these bad boys. All right. Take two. Why not? Oh no. I'm gonna blow onto the cookie, or well, rather across the cookie into the microphone, so that all you guys can get like a sense, like a sense of the texture of the cookie, through the the uh, the way the air flows over the cookie into the microphone will give you kind of a a, a feeling. Yeah. yeah. This is, a, this is a significantly good cookie. Why, thank you. Everyone should actually make these. Yeah. All the time. Yes. You can find the recipe somewhere. <laughs> I did. Cookies. Cookies. Like cookies. I'm going to have one, too. Yeah, what I like to do is I, oh, I pick a good. stinger like that, and you whisper over it, and it's, it's like how movies are sold. Cookies are good. I like them. Do it again. Here's one for you. <laughs> did you say in a world without air? I did. <laughs> nice. That's an odd, uh, difficult Best. world. <laughs> Best kind of world. <laughs> you remember that scene in um, Spaceballs where they uh, suck all the air out of the uh, kingdom planet? with a giant vacuum cleaner and um, so everyone dies but then they reverse the vacuum and all the air comes back and they come back to life and the king as he's coming back to life he starts to breathe and he goes air air <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of what that movie would be. 
I love that. <laughs> I forgot all about that scene. There's so many good scenes in that movie. Which shit's good. Like, after you die from not being able to breathe, you kind of forget what air is. Yeah, I take it for granted. I don't. With asthma and having to take, like, pills for it and shit. Oh, you have <laughs> asthma? Yeah. And fucking, where I, I do not take well, air what, for what granted sometimes. What pills do you sometimes. take? Um, Montelukast, which is generic for... <laughs> I don't remember. It's like, that's hilariously boring <laughs> place to take it. And then I don't even remember the fucking drug. There's a, let's let's play it though. <laughs> <laughs> There's the accolade inhalers. Um, there is the... Uh, is that like the your Advair? The nebulizer. Yeah. The Advair is in the discus. Yeah. I do have an Advair discus, but it's been replaced with uh, the orange thing. Which is... Um, EpiPen. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just gotta... Uh, uh, it's so... I, I hate to rub it in places that are hearing us that aren't Vegas, but it's so freaking hot for February. It's been like air conditioning weather all day. Um, I really hope it's either the opposite in summer, and summer will be weirdly mild, but pretty much no one thinks that. I think we're all just gonna die. Yeah. And the door handles of our cars are gonna melt, and we'll all be stranded outside Target. Yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> which, which doesn't actually exist. Yeah. We're gonna be in a black hole of abysmal non-existence. But it'll, it'll be so hot while well, hallucinating that there's a Target. I'm just yeah. <laughs> dying in some random parking lot. I swear Target used to be a real thing. One point, just shaking your heads now, man. What happened to Target? You guys? It's a conspiracy, man. That's what they want you to think. <laughs> That's what happens when I don't see advertisements anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep using YouTube Red, which I've been plugging with no results back to me at all. No one's giving no me one any cares. kickbacks, but yeah. They're like, yeah, YouTube's fine. YouTube Who cares Red, about you YouTube Red? Because YouTube shows you like the same commercial four times in a row, so I'm over it. But anyway, I think that's why I forgot. That I think that's why Target stopped existing. If you don't see their ads because anymore. Because of your YouTube rep subscription. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah their, their marketing is the same color. So. Way to go, that's true. <laughs> there are no other companies that use red in their marketing. <laughs> Fact. You know, that drove me nuts when I told someone I'd meet them in a Denny's and they went to an IHOP because... Yeah, they sell similar food, but I was like, look, you go to an IHOP and everything is blue. You go to Denny's and everything is orange. How'd you mess that up? Am I the only one that pays attention to marketing colors? And it was... Are uh, they anywhere near each other, those two locations? Yeah, they're a couple blocks away. No, oh, I see. But it's not an excuse. No, it's not. Proximity It would have been hilarious mean... if it was like on the complete opposite end of town. <laughs> yeah, or I perhaps even... another town. <laughs> It's like, oh, IHOP? I thought you meant Peggy Sue's in Barstow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a lot bigger problem than just colorblindness of marketing. All right, I'll, I'll be there in two and a half hours. <laughs> Does that mean that you're not racist if you can't even tell what color <laughs> company's marketing is? Totally. In relation? Yep. <laughs> I'm colorblind when it comes to marketing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not racist. I can't tell the difference between IHOP and Denny's. Yeah. That sounds It pretty, works. Yeah. yeah, it works totally. Yeah. I've used that excuse many times. <laughs> That's how I get out of all my racist jokes. That's a good friend you have there. <laughs> Backs up my improbable statements. So that reminds me of the marketing game. Oh, yeah? Which I think we should play. All right. Oftentimes uh, yeah. we let the Wheel of Wheels determine which game we play. Not today. I I smell marketing game. Have you ever had some ridiculous product you ever wanted to sell? No. No? <laughs> no. Really? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. You never you I never think. had the little capitalist itch? You know, hmm. wanted to rip think. people off you for all their money. A product that you thought, hey. I'm going to have to go back a way. Let me think. Got to go in the brain time machine. Hmm. Marketing game. Get ready to purchase product. What do you got, Walls? Uh, I've got um, invisible coasters. <laughs> because you've got this gorgeous table, right? 
and you don't want people's gross cup rings on it, but when you put coasters there, it blocks a significant portion of the gorgeousness. And then you might as well just throw that table in a dumpster in the backyard if you're not going to see its whole surface of gorgeousness, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have coasters that are transparent, it stops the the groad from your gross guests putting their gross cups on your table, but they get to see see all of your beautiful table. Especially handy if you have a wicker table. Right? Because you don't want any of those little folds of wickerness to be obscured by some ugly coaster. Mm-hmm. And if juice from your gross guests' drinks, because your guests are gross, gets in the oh, wicker, it's gone. It's over. That wicker's in the garbage. Right away. Right away. What a so, shame. Transparent coasters. They probably already exist, and they're not a sponsor. That's how much we believe in the concept, but they will be. And tell them we sent you for a discount that they will not honor. You know what's even better, though, is coasters that are invisible, but also intangible. <laughs> right? So it's just, you can just sell an empty box and like, oh, The here's... manufacturing costs are significantly less, yes. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, that's, that's the real, the real moneymaker there. Intangible coasters. They're the coasters of the mind. If you have a table that doesn't require coasters because it's already grody, which I know that's my table, guys table's already grody i don't need coasters i don't need that coaster life but sometimes things get fancy it gets later into the evening people have had some wine and you want to feel like you're a coaster person that's when you bust out the intangible coasters because by then everyone's too drunk to know the coasters aren't really there anyway Mm -hmm. intangible coasters you can find them at target yes (laughs) (laughs) because target also doesn't exist so if you go there in your mind place to get them yeah you had a great deal. I love products that exist only in the mind. Like, I, but I bet you could sell them. Like, you could just put an empty box out there, yeah. call it Intangible Coasters, and, you know, all you have to do is put, like, a, a little label on the back, like, these aren't. this is just an empty box, not real coasters. You have to give it a snappy name, though. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Ghost Coast. Ah, there you Ghosters. go. Ghosters. 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 Ah. Ghosters. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Coasters, get your coasters today. They're on a submarine for some reason. <laughs> so, we did it. We're rich, boys. Yeah. The best thing about intangible products is the fact that uh, there's already a, a bright e- existing history of how well you can sell and make a lot of money on something that's not visible, uh, often has no discernible value that ends up benefiting anyone later in life, like universities. Mm. <laughs> tax software. <laughs> tax software. <laughs> oh. mm. right, I think I'm getting the hang of this marketing game. Right. Uh, so how about um, you know how um, they sell um, special drink holders for the shower or bath? For, oh yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. taking a nice bubble bath and you want to have a glass of wine, but you can't necessarily have the wine lay on the floor so you might as well you spill it the glass shatters in the tub and there's glass in the tub yeah then what are you to do then what are you yeah it goes down the drain yeah the blood everywhere it's a disaster so they have like usually a suction cup type arrangement where it right on the the bath wall and then your wine glass fits perfectly in there or they have a shower version for your uh shower beer you know Uh. So now, what if you're ha- like, like me? You're taking a nice lavender bubble bath, and you are just hunkering for some toast. So what about happens every a time? Bath time toaster holder that fits right there on the bath wall, directly above you in the bath, and you can make toast right there. Yeah, you can use any existing toaster you already have in your home. Yeah. It just gives it a convenient It'll be wet location. It'll adjustable to fit different models, um, patent pending. Um, and um, you just need to get an extension cord and run that from some other part of the bathroom, an open outlet, and bring that you know, probably beneath you in in the bath so that it's not on top of you. Like, yeah. That would be uncomfortable, right? The, the, the extension cord's covered in rubber. It can go under the yeah. water as long as it goes back it's out of the shielded. water. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, you don't put the, the end term? in the is water. Is that the technical just, term? Shielded? It's hella shielded. Yeah. To be more then, technical. You know, just have a loaf of sourdough or perhaps rye, if that's oh, yeah. more your fancy. Just right there in a separate holder that right there on the wall. I see more value on this that you haven't touched on yet. Uh, have you thought about how many meals involve a soft food and a crispy food? There's mm. a, like, say, a soup and then a grilled cheese sandwich yes. or, or yes. a soft sandwich and then some crispy chips. We as human beings love the feeling of experiences that have dynamics mm-hmm. where there's something moist and something crunchy like toast. Yeah. It brilliantly or, fills out the whole experience. Like, it's what the shower is like missing. Like Rice Krispie Treats. Right? Yeah, Rice Krispies, it's that softness and that crispiness mm-hmm. married. And the shower, it's just all soggy in the shower. Mm-hmm. Nothing in the shower is really not moist if you're doing it right. Yeah. But that's the problem with showers. I dread taking a shower. I don't know if it shows. But <laughs> that could really turn my shower experience around. Getting a little crisp to it. Having something crunchy in the shower mm-hmm. is what it's missing. It would balance out the whole experience have a little umbrella so you can just like have your toast under the umbrella we well, just gotta eat it quick or you just you yeah. just you know the back's wet the front's eating toast yeah right i think you just need to embrace it if your toast gets a little soggy then yeah, yeah. that's you part know. of shower toast all yeah. right yeah, yeah. I guess shower I toast gets a touch of sog that's why they say you don't you don't drag your feet when you're eating shower toast yeah and yeah. you don't shit where you eat no. <laughs> that's and, another thing and i rarely the shit in the shower so yeah. that's perfect. <laughs> Once in a while, you just go, you know. Sometimes it happens. No, peeing that... in the shower. I recommend that even. Yeah, so does Madonna. She's brilliant at she medical would. things. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't she say that on Letterman once? Before I was born? <laughs> Everyone peed in the I shower. That I somehow know about. <laughs> it's supposed to kill the bacteria. So there's feet. very little things that happen before you're born that you're aware of? <laughs> <laughs> very little. Things I'd happen. like to keep it that way. Things happened before I was born. <laughs> the thing is, peeing on your feet specifically is the way to go. Yeah, if you're going to bother bacteria. peeing in the shower and you just pee in the drain, I mean, you can pee into a drain outside the shower using the sink. But within the shower, you want to use that experience to get urine on your feet. Because it sounds like I'm joking around, but urine on your feet's really good. Like it helps athletes' foot and jellyfish stings. And I actually legit encourage that. Shark like, bites? Yeah, shark bites are the best thing to put urine on. Yeah. <laughs> Heals 80 times faster. And it depends on how, how thorough the shark bite is. Sometimes you might need to pack a little gauze in there. Mm-hmm. But then pee on it. For sure. Mostly urine fixes everything. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Real talk, though. Peeing in the shower is so great. I don't want to just like leave this as something like, oh, those guys joking around about peeing in the shower. No, legit, do this. Change your life. Report back on your findings yeah. using the hashtag greasy conversation and also hashtag double flat. Double flat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hashtag shower toast. Shower toast. <laughs> hashtag um, foot pee. Uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. <laughs> um, I love it. Hashtag spunk lube. We are closing out the season right. And how you determine a show is closing out a season right is how many hashtags. But not only the quantity, but the quality. Yeah. These are concise hashtags. Less than 12 characters, more than 7. Quality hashtags. Every one of them right in the pocket. Hashtag instagood. Yeah, <laughs> instagood. Hashtag, Hashtag in the pocket. Hashtag life with a Y instead of a I. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's how mark. That's marketing. That yeah. was just the marketing a game moment. Game. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost marketing too well. We can end up with uh, the slaves that love everything we do, even if it's filming dead bodies in Japanese suicide gardens. <laughs> that's the level of fan that we're searching for. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll defend us. Speaking of which... We have new merch. Speaking of throwing in, plugging merch into every opportunity, we not only have, even speaking of using uh, people's suicides to plug merch, we have this. You know the Jake Paul controversy on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah Logan okay. Paul. 
Whatever. I think Jake's partially responsible. You can't just leave him. Jake is a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, low gang for life. <laughs> Those Paul guys. You were about to get in a brawl over it. But um, where was I? I was going with uh, the, the merch, merch, merch. We will beat other bands' prices on merch. Sorry. Even Candy War Pops merch, if you show us their pricing, we're going to sell our merch cheaper. <laughs> Beating other bands' prices on our merch. We can't beat their prices on their merch. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to... Until they all get on the same... You can use the same thing as us, and then it'd be the same price, I guess. But you'd have to put up with making almost no money on it like we are. <laughs> Because we've set our prices masochistically low. But they're socks. We do. Our, our merch does include socks. They are crew cut. There's pictures of butter or old cell phones or spilt nail polish on your socks. Like a championship in the next board meeting. Uh, championship. I have, I have some good socks on right now. Show us. <laughs> Man, what is that? Is that a little yeah. those little hot air balloons? It's a uh, little bub the cat in a hot air balloon. Oh man! Wow! Yeah. All right. I guess I guess we're out of the sock game. Yeah, that almost made me angry for a moment. I caught myself <laughs> having to like control Mike my emotional drop. response. <laughs> <laughs> now it's broken forever. No. So the thing is, socks with cats, we all know, are great. No one's going to argue that socks yeah, with cats on them are better socks for the most part. Yeah. Hot air balloons, also great because I love wine. Yeah. And we all know wine's way better in a hot air balloon. So I really think that no one that really enjoys wine has ever uh, questioned the relationship of hot air balloons and wine. And then to combine all those, except for the wine, in socks, which, you know, you stomp on grapes, right? So that's why they're Not great the socks. No. No, but you know. And socks. Yeah. Sometimes you can have a machine stomp on the grapes for you. But yeah. even then, that machine, in my opinion, is still doing what I would consider stomping. And that's why your socks are great. But can a machine really stomp? <laughs> <laughs> and can it blend? If it doesn't know it's blending, is it really blending? Oh, that's, the, that's the blender paradox that I'm getting a... a what are the, the thing you get? The Nobel Prize? Yeah, I'm getting one of those for that. The blender paradox, yeah. <laughs> that thing people just get haphazardly now, that Nobel Prize. Yeah. They just call people up and they're like, hey, remember that, that blender paradox? You got the <laughs> Nobel Prize. <laughs> but not you. They'll just call someone else about it. Yeah. They're like, no, I never heard about it. Oh, but someone else did. So you got the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Good job, Thomas Edison. <laughs> Do you remember uh, back when we had the show in the car, there was a episode where we were talking shit on the Nobel Prize because someone won it for something stupid and like the last two people had won it for something nearly as dumb that was really frustrating you guys there's some Nobel Prize controversy that's really like lowered the status of it as a thing but I don't remember now so you guys will have to tune into our previous episodes yeah it's basically like 40% plugs for itself on this show Speaking it. of great things the show does, let's spin the wheel of wheels. Yeah. I'm sure there's about, more uh, news, too, that we need to bump into, but we can do I, that sequentially. I feel like this is the finale we need to... Is this the finale? This is the season finale. Oh, but man. But next week, season premiere. That kind of... Man. Premieres. <laughs> I feel like we should write a movie. Who's on like we the should... next show? What's that? Oh, oh. I'm glad you asked. And yes, we should just dive right into writing a movie. Uh, the next episode is um, Aaron. What? <laughs> <laughs> noise, Aaron. The Aaron from the from the noise stuff. Mm. Yeah. Whatever. Right on. That guy. <laughs> He's the guest next time. Noise, Aaron. You guys, season premiere. Really exciting guest, Aaron. <laughs> oh man Aaron Dunham fucking yeah, remembered Dunham 
Mm. Fucking laws. Always food related guests. <laughs> All right, so in this movie, we're going to pick a setting, maybe two, three. Let's see how many actors and actresses we can have and writers with Cohen as their last name. Not all the same spelling, though, because there's so many people Cohen in entertainment, right? It's pretty if you much, ever get bugged if you're related to any of them, no. is always different ones. No? Are these people not observant? No. Oh, shit, there's a bunch. There's David X. Cohen from Futurama. There's, a, there's another Cohen that... Um, is I want to say a sitcom writer. There's a shit ton of Coens as a little, director. Little Jimmy Cohen. Yeah, throw in your Coens on the bottom because there's hella Coens in entertainment for reals. Yeah, blush away about it. It's the, real. You've the got Cohen, heritage. The Coen brothers. What are, yeah. The Coen brothers, the directors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are their first uh, names? I was, wait, I was waiting for a while to spring that one up. That's like the most obvious one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like how many can he actually name? <laughs> Let's find out. No, I don't do names, you guys. No. No, I just just those guys who, who no do that. Of. They did that one movie. It was about the uh... the car that went fast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that movie. That's the most famous movie, right? <laughs> totally. All right, let's let's pick a setting okay, first. Okay, before we let Speed Racer oh. go, did any of you guys notice that the, before the movie starts and it's like about racing time and there's like a race car flag, there's just a psychedelic fractal color thing for no reason. It has nothing to do with any of the plot of the movie. Did you ever notice that? It has everything to do with the plot of the movie, man. <laughs> How? And then what? It, it just... Okay, yeah. no, it does. That's my point. Because that movie was meant to be watched on Mushrooms. Totally. And oh. It Every tells day. you in the beginning, secretly, like, hey, if you decided to do a psychedelic and then watch this movie, welcome, this fractal of colors is going to hug and snuggle you, and mm. then we're going to start an actual kids movie for children. Has anyone tried pairing Speed Racer with Dark Side of the Moon? Uh, I haven't. That's well, I a good tried idea. playing Alice in Wonderland. No, I'm sorry. What's the one where she... the I mix those two up. The red the red shoes girl. I played that red shoes girl movie. <laughs> just the sound of it while also <laughs> watching I didn't do it right, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you guys know that famous movie, The Red yeah. Shoes Girl on the Green Road? <laughs> the, green, the Green Road. With the, the Golden <laughs> City. John Elton did that song about it. Right? Well, or he said goodbye oh, to the, the yellow road. No, it was the yellow. Yeah, yeah. The road was yellow. The city was green. And, and uh, yeah, dark side the, of the piano moon. was red. Wizard of Oz. I'm content with my number of references. <laughs> no, have you tried syncing up Speed Racer with Dark Side of the Moon? I haven't. I haven't seen Speed Racer. Oh, man. Just the cartoons. The actual movie Speed Racer, it's really, it's really crazy to watch on a hallucinogen. Mm -hmm. um, it's like watching it as a child in another country, but you don't. It's not a real country, you know what I mean? This is that feeling of I'm in another country, <laughs> but it reassures you right in the beginning with this colorful fractal swirly thing for no reason. And then there's a checkered flag, and then it's a movie about race cars. It's the weirdest. Like they just wanted to like let you know you did good. It's cool. You're safe. Mm -hmm. You're comfortable. No, I think it's a good flick on its own, even without psychedelics. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty underrated. Is there a monkey? Yeah, Chim Chim. Okay. Chim Chim. Yeah. Okay. He, he I'm, throw, I'm glad they kept that. It's not like Friends where they just ditch the monkey when it starts humping stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Those people weren't yeah, in it like, for the long haul. Yeah, in the pilot there's a monkey and then suddenly you never see the monkey again. Psh. Like, huh. What was realistic is can't really have monkeys like that as a pet without them humping everything. They're a fucking yeah. wild animal. <laughs> so thanks, Friends, for being accurate about that. We made a mistake. <laughs> All right. So first setting of the movie comes with a respin. Microscopically inside one of the cast. One of my favorite settings. Yeah. A little inner space action. Also while inside of an airport. What's great is as many times as we've had the airplane setting, now airport setting. Also in Arizona. <laughs> so an airport in Arizona while microscopically inside one of the cast. <laughs> Feel free to jump uh, between all of those settings. Maybe there's a microscopic airport. Ooh. Mm. The female lead is Beyonce. <laughs> Finally. 
I know we've been waiting for. Uh, does she have a nickname besides like? Can we just give it like Queen B? Queen B is that what it is? All right, Yonce. That, that one's rarely used. No, that's B, depreciated. B, Queen B, yeah. Yas Queen, Slay, 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 like Yas Queen Slay. Nice. Male lead is Brad Pitt. I don't know what the fuck any of that shit is. I don't know what y'all are talking about right now. Don't grumble about. Our, <laughs> don't grumble about our buddy Brad. And then we owe, we owe this to him. Listen, we owe this to him. I'm sure we do. And then He's we're gonna waited spin... patiently to be in one of our movies for a minute. And then we're gonna spin Will Smith to see which Will Smith is in our movie. Because every one of our movies which has movie? Will Smith in it. Mm. But we like to let fate decide which of the many faces of Will Smith is in our movie. It's Fresh Prince, son. Yes, the OG. Mm. All right. So now we need the the plots. We got mashed up a couple plots. We got high fantasy. So, elks and elks? No, elves. Elves and orcs who ride elks. I feel like I should be taking notes. <laughs> oh no, we'll cover no, this well, yeah. and, then, and then just no, don't worry. It'll it's refreshers. All, it's like a bad. It'll all kind of fall into shows. place. Okay. <laughs> Paranormal activity. All right. Oh. So, so wait, it, what was the other plot besides Paranormal? <laughs> all right, so we got a high fantasy slash paranormal activity flick starring Brad Pitt, Queen B, whatever, Fresh Prince Will Smith, taking place in an airport in Arizona while microscopically inside one of the class cast. <laughs> there's there's also a, a class on a field trip at the airport. <laughs> we just decided. Awesome. I want to take a minute to mention that. Will Smith hasn't gotten younger since we've started including us in our come on in our movies, and I was looking at his face the other day, just like, oh, it's our old buddy Will Smith. It's really good to see him again. And I was staring into his in his eyes, and I started to like almost tear up a bit, a little bit, like, wow, this fucking this is a beautiful man. And I realized, like, oh, he's done all these cool things. What a cool dude. And and it, it dawned on me that the older he gets the further his eyes get apart from each other. And I just think that's it's beautiful. I think that it's part of how we all grow and progress as people and our eyes get further apart. <laughs> and it's really noticeable. It's almost awkward. But I think it only makes him look perfect for the role that we have him in, in this movie, which has got to be something uh, like... Uh, I think he should be a cartoon fish somehow. Hammerhead shark. I think shark. we need that. Yeah, Exactly! We need the extra challenge to take advantage of how... I, and I, I hope that he's not offended by this when we go over it later, because we're going to have a discussion about it. I know it. But it's part of how he's grown only more beautiful and hammerhead shark-like. And yes. All right, so uh, Will Smith is gets shrunken down somehow because Brad Pitt is a scientist traveling to receive his Nobel Prize from Arizona, Right. So Will Smith gets shrunken down and turned into a hammerhead shark and injected into Beyonce. Because I was thinking, uh, we've shrunken people down in previous movies. That's been done. That's a trope. But I've never seen a movie where there is a caveat. I love when there's a new technology like, oh, people can shrink, people can teleport. But there's like a risk involved. There's something like that you lose or something bad. So in this case, you can only get shrunken down and put inside someone else's body if you also are turned into a sea creature of some kind. No, it has to be a hammerhead shark specifically. Yeah, because we've found hammerhead sharks are the best at swimming through the primarily liquid environment within the human body. Mm -hmm. So it's impractical to turn someone in their current form into like a little go inside. You know, people are always in some kind of spaceship or something inside the human body. Yeah. Nah. In, in real life, in this universe, you just you have to become a hammerhead shark also. And that tiny hammerhead is just right. the perfect not... shaped creature to go through the human body, it turns yeah. out. Can fight viruses. Uh, yeah, some easily. of the most powerful vi viruses that we've had to struggle against as AIDS. human beings. Yeah, AIDS, for example, shaped like a hammerhead shark. That's part of why it's so difficult that. to... Uh... Wow. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah. <laughs> that needs to be a thing I add. Just the sound from that. Why isn't that a thing yet? I did manage to get this one. <laughs> it doesn't even need context to be deeply enjoyable. Oh, yeah. I feel like it should be... Rather than paranormal activity, we're just going to go... Just take it a little out there it should be like a, a horror slash uh speed 
So like Will Smith gets turned into a hammerhead shark and he has to escape or achieve a goal or solve a puzzle like Saw while inside Beyonce before he can get turned back into a human. Nice. Mm. So he's got to do a Saw-like situation to even get out of the person he's stuck inside. Yeah, while also constantly swimming at a certain (laughs) speed. (laughs) Or Beyonce will blow up. But you know sharks never stop swimming. Yeah, they stop breathing. Except for some that that do. (laughs) (laughs) Except for those, though. It's still a motivational thing. Yeah, but something to do with breathing. I learned this in the second grade. It must be true. If you stop swimming, then you lose your eyes on the prize, is the way I take it. Yeah. Or in Will Smith's case, one eye on the prize and one eye also on the prize, but not necessarily has to be the case. A totally different prize. prize Totally different prize (laughs) way over there. (laughs) Old two prize Will. He's always got two prizes. So who's the villain? I feel like we gotta just throw a villain. Who was the villain in Speed? Was that was that That Rick Howard? Did someone say Rick Ross? I think Will Smith is a villain, but Rick Ross should be in this. But both Rick Rosses. No, isn't the bus the villain? Whoa. When you think about it. <laughs> the guy no, who there put, was someone villain that did that to the bus. The guy yeah, who put the bus on it. The bus could have been in on it. Dude, right? it's like Carrie. The, <laughs> the bus framed him. Yeah. It was a setup. The bus became possessed with a dead woman yeah. that also wanted to be rigged with explosives. Well, what was that Stephen King movie that was like Cujo but with a car? Carrie. That was Carrie? Yeah, that was Carrie. Okay. No, Car- Carrie was the... That was the the, the, the bloody telekinetic chick. Oh, uh, Sophia. What's the yeah. fucking Chris, car's Christine. name? It's Christine. Christine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the very I angry get car. Sophia and Christine mixed up. Yeah, all the time. they're very close. They rhyme. Yeah. So it's mm. yeah. Well, Sophia is Christine in Spanish, right? Sure. <laughs> like Jose is Joe in Spanish. Like oh, it's Christine. Well, I should call you Sophia, right, Christine? Now that we're in Mexico, that's not. We switch your name when you leave. Go, you know. Like when, uh, like when I'm in Israel, I'm not Joseph, I'm Jezu, right? How you guys don't you do that. Israel? I've never been to Israel. So I how just, do you know? I'm preparing. I studied. Oh. Got to gotta practice. <laughs> got to get ready. For when I just suddenly well, wake up in Israel. <laughs> I, just... <laughs> I know my name means God shall add, and I'm going to take that bit of info and use it uh, indiscriminately where it has no bearing on anything else going on. Because I'm everything I learn, I have to use it somewhere. I love it. Isn't that like a total like name dropper thing? Like that friend that like every time they get a piece of information it gets worked into everything they bring up for the next month. Yeah. I'm that friend tragically. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright. We forgive you. Yeah, mm-hmm. remember when I learned about... Uh, Oh, basically everything we've talked about this podcast. <laughs> We're going to do the, re- the redux. Oh, hey, the before we dive into the writing of the movie, I, I think know. we've got to, you know, I see the, the dread in your eyes. That moment is upon us. It's time for commercial chug. Do you want to pay more for a new car? pre-recorded commercials I like to spring them on people I like like just enough lead up for you to be like and then you stop breathing for a moment so they're going to be like okay no it's really happening is a better credit score is your credit score less than 700 do you know well now at the same time you can learn exactly what your credit score is and learn how to make it better ah half breath that's like a portion you'll start to whatever this is a behind the scenes look yeah. The glamorous world of I want to encourage the people looking at this while we unavoidably have to talk over this audio part because I can't stop myself doing that. And then later on, listen to the audio feed, listen to this commercial. And if you call this number happening right now, uh, even if you don't get the product, if you mention RadioVegas.rocks, we get some amount of money. But if you actually patronize them, yeah. Then we get like significantly more. Oh, 
But you don't actually have to fully interact with them to let them know that you contacted them because of us. And they reward us financially. And that pays for all this. It pays for this gorgeous window overlooking the strip. Or I smudge it up, someone's going to have to clean off my fingerprints now. It pays for all that. And other things do too. But that's a major protect you a major idea. sponsor and thing that they're hooking us up with get your killer idea from these. In front of it's a really good it's really good deals they give us dream big and all it takes is a little bit of name dropping of radio vegas dot com idea starter guide davidson charges fees for sure also you should probably check your friends for every once in a while yeah this shit's legit useful to do anyway you're probably going to check your credit store anyway the credit score your credit store maybe also you guys, I hope you love it. That commercial chug is another one of the movie. Hey. This, this, this TV is better than I think they're also TV. better with a little Why? bit of interstitial. Because you can save 45% on packages What interstitial price cable bills. Can be one wow. just Take those choked out on the fly. And, and save with this TV. <laughs> Plus, you get a free DVR. You know, one of mine was, but I didn't like it to be off-sided, so I had an artificial one put in that didn't quite match. But you can save hundreds of dollars. Does your cable company? Do you really need interstitials to be considered a man nowadays? Best TV programming at your fingertips. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's why I have the artificial one put in. Goodbye to the high cable bill and save up to forty percent on this TV package today. Really kind of fluid size it is from one day to the next. Eight hundred two nine three zero three two eight. Eight hundred two nine three zero three two eight. 800 right. Ready to come back? And four. I never normally count down this is luxurious. And we're back. It's Greasy Conversations times. Stills for us is. Because everything's plural all of a sudden. It's the plural half of the show. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So we're making a movie. The movie's already been greenlit. I found out during the break. I got a phone call. Yeah. Uh, someone from the new Weinstein. Oh. Yeah. It, it's called Post Weinstein. It's their new revamp. But they're they're going to back the product. Rebranding. Sweet. Yeah. They're trying to get a hip, fresh, new image. And they're trying to appeal to youth culture. And mm -hmm. as old people, they've assumed that if they don't like something and it's off-putting to them, then it's probably super hip to youth culture. They're just grading it that way. Yeah. And in that way, we've utterly impressed them. Like the Emoji Movie. Exactly. Yeah. The so first I, movie I, to be I available hate... from the Americas and the Arab Emirates. Did you really? know that? I did not know the that. The Arab Emirates have banned American more. movies for a long time. The first one they decide to allow is the Emoji Movie. <laughs> That's our heritage. That's number one. Go the West. Mm. All right. That where, was a sad story. Where are we at? Something bombs on a hammerhead shark inside Beyonce, who's also Will Smith. Bombs on a hammerhead right. shark. That sounds like a like a hip hop uh, chorus. Like that's Yo, like a Beyonce be song. Yeah, yeah. Right? to tie in with the movie release. Yeah. that's Here the hook the right there. And bombs the on a video. hammerhead shark. <laughs> uh. Bombs on a hammerhead shark. Whoops. That's right. None of those are hip-hop sounds. This one is, though. That's a hip-hop sound, right? Yeah. Money? Yeah. It sounds like a yeah. tiny bit of money. That means you're purchasing something. Yeah, it should sound like a lot of money. Perhaps a Maserati. Yeah, like a Maserati <laughs> takes a lot more than that amount of money. Yeah. It's several of those. Mm -hmm. Several hundred thousand. So we have ghosts in this movie? It's supposed to be paranormal activity. But oh, is shit. it like a haunted... Ghosts. I mean, it is Arizona. True. Right, so there's probably like a uh, ghost in Arizona, right? Yeah. Arizona is that a thing? Native American ghost. <laughs> yeah, like the airport perhaps is built on a Native American burial ground. Oh shit! We're that going is there. also inside of Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, I'm having a hard time keeping track of all these pieces. Oh, we, no, maybe we find yeah. out at the end of, move, end of the movie that everything took place inside of Beyonce without us realizing. Like mm. a lot of parts that we didn't or, realize were inside of Beyonce. perhaps you realized that you are Beyonce. Whoa, us as the viewer and have been living And you've as... been dead the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that too. But we should have the spin on it where like at, at the end after everything is resolved and it's the, you know, Will Smith gets out of Beyonce but they all find out they're just in a bigger Beyonce. 
Whoa. A Beyonce uh, inside of another larger yeah. Beyonce. And she was just dreaming the whole time. But all the stuff in the movie actually happened, but... Like turtles all the way down. She still woke up. But all the yeah. turtles are Beyonce. Yeah. I love it. But we need, we need some conflicts. So like Brad Pitt as a scientist, is he an evil scientist? He should, just, he should also be an orc, right? Just because it's like high fantasy. Oh, it's supposed to be high mm. fantasy. Yeah, there's totally orc scientists here. Yeah. yeah, who win Nobel Prizes. There's not enough sci-fi fantasy where there's really like the fantasy part of the weird creatures and the sci-fi part of the cool space technology all together. I mean, you see like dinosaurs with gadgets strapped to them or like a pterodactyl with like one eye that shoots a laser. That's, I feel, lacking in American mm. culture in general. Like and, a Dinobot kind of situation. Uh, it, yeah, this movie seems Dinobot AF. But mm. also there's ghosts. because <laughs> And sea life. Sea, sea life and dinosaurs like the the back in the day kind of dinosaur that was more reptilian i feel like, like there's a similar feel the to their skin yeah, yeah old fashioned because now we know yeah. they're birds and they probably had hella feathers yeah and, but eh. that's not as exciting we'll go no. back to pretending they didn't yeah yeah and that's i feel as like what you want it to be their skin is a lot like fish we'll make them scaly scaly dinosaurs fish fishosaurs oh man we're making Megalodon? a whole universe here yeah that was real, right? Megalodon sounds real. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure right, that was real. Can confirm was Megalodon. there a Lodon that later they're like, whoa, I found a way bigger Lodon. Let's call it Megalodon. Yes, there was actually. Sweet. Yeah, little known fact. Totally. What totally if that's true. the name of the movie? Because we're starting a whole universe. We've got a, it's Lodon. And then catchy subtitle. Mega. <laughs> Lodon. Pre-Mega. Pre-Mega. The prequel. <laughs> Also, there's airplanes. I love it. Imagine the seats, though. How the airplane seats would have to adapt with such a different variety of uh, <laughs> scaly underwater dinosaurs with lots of electronic gear strapped to them superfluously. Mm. Like, you don't need, like, the, what do you call it, the, where all the bullets are on the strap? Like, like you're a fashion queen, Bullet but strap. it's bullets... It's called like a bangalier or something. Bullet ear, buccaneer. There's an ear to it. The, All of those things. The fashion yeah. show They're thing with the bullets. That's in the trailer. This guy's got the fashion show thing with the bullets. No, what if, uh, what if the new way to travel in sash. airports, right, is that everyone gets shrunken down and turned into <laughs> hammerhead sharks, gets put into side Beyonce, she flies first class, <laughs> and then on the other end, everyone gets out and... You got your destination. When Beyonce the, flies first class, it's like we're all flying first class. It's true. The best part of that will be when Casey Neistat on YouTube does his <laughs> review of flying first class this way. This time, this is my first class seat inside a hammerhead as a hammerhead shark inside of Beyonce. <laughs> Look, the seat reclines all the way back. Look at two screens. We. <laughs> All this is said is like a gurgling shark, but we love it because it's Casey Neistat. It's still wearing shades. No, but could you, I mean, you should be able to talk. I mean, if we're going to shrink people down and turn them into hammerhead sharks, you should just be able to talk. Yeah, we I have mean, to wear some kind of sci-fi. necklace. But then the, wouldn't the hammerhead sharks need to have human vocal cords? They do. They're, the human vocal cords are put inside do they, the necklace. in actual life or just in the context of the movie? Both. Oh. Just decided. Well, you know, we, is CRISPR. Is something you can decide? Yes, because totally. you've heard about CRISPR, right? I haven't. CRISPR. Are they one of our sponsors? <laughs> I wish. A CRISPR is a, a technology for gene editing. Hmm. It's, a it's real like Twenty Three and Me, but more malicious. It's like Twenty Three and Me, but not read only. Oh, write as well. Yeah. Overwrite. Totally. Perhaps delete. <laughs> so there's this bacteria that it's a form of E. coli that when it has um, a piece of genetic information put into it, it automatically, just as part of its like defense mechanism, will go and look for that piece of genetic material and like replace it with another piece. I'm r- explaining this terribly, but I highly recommend looking it up. Um, there's a Cas9... Um, Cas9 and CRISPR are the two things. I think CRISPR is the technology and Cas9 is the bacteria that does it. But 
you basically can edit a piece of genetic information. This thing will find, you, you can just program a bunch of these little bacteria warriors to look for this string of code, replace it with this string of code. It's like find and replace for DNA. And it's already being used to treat some genetic illnesses. And also give hammerhead sharks human vocal cords. Bingo. It's the future, fellas. We made it. Vocal cords and sharks. That's that sound. That's what that means. Yeah. It's also when they sing, it's beautiful. It's like castrato. <laughs> Without having to mutilate anybody. <laughs> The sound uh, of a, a young hammerhead shark with human vocal pre-pu- cords. Prepubescent <laughs> hammerhead shark. Do they start singing opera while they're inside Beyonce? Hell yeah. Oh, we can have a musical number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah a whole they, they Bollywood sing... production? Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. This is double greenlit. <laughs> Extra greenlit. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how many green lights do you need to actually proceed? One, but we like we we shoot for three. Okay. At least. Backups got it. Who was who was the, the guy who did the bombs in speed? That was Ruger Hauer, right? Was it or Dennis Hopper? They look alike. I get them confused. We should have Dennis Hopper because I remember his face better. Alright, it's Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Ruger Hauer was in um Blade Runner. We should call both yeah. of them yeah. and just see Crying who's more excited rain. about it. No, we should totally get Dennis Hopper because he played uh, King Koopa. Yeah! In the Mario Brothers mm-hmm. movie. Th- that's the role we need to bring up to him first when we get him on the phone. <laughs> hey, remember what yeah. you did in yeah, you wanna, the Mario Brothers movie? Yeah, you want to bring that role back for this movie? He is dead, though. Damn did he? Yeah. yeah. He passed away. Oh, that's right. Son of a bitch. We're bringing him back. CGI, right? Bring it's him not back. the first time we've had a dead celeb be in one of our movies. Yeah. We CGI people all the time. Or holograms. Yeah. Go the extra mile. Some people CGI a person in because they say, hey, you're going to see it on the screen anyway. We take a slanted piece of glass and a projector under the floor and build a stage up to hold the projector just so it's a hologram in that moment. And then people, you know. I I don't think we should get that high tech. We should just, like, cut (laughs) clips from Mario Brothers. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and just throw it in the that movie. Look anyway, it's like cornrows of his own skin. Just like the really, yeah, like <laughs> slicked back hair. Skin rows. Oh. Yeah. Was that supposed to be hair? It looked like someone cornrowed his scalp. It did. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's why that movie didn't do good. Creature, right? Uh, so maybe it's okay. uh, lizard flesh. See, that's an example of half measures. Like you, no half measures, guys. You either make Dennis Hopper a full lizard. Or you don't at all. None of this half yeah. half lizard. Most movies baloney. don't. Most movies. But for that that movie they, they certainly went half a mile, not the extra no. mile, but it went the one half mile. I wonder if it holds out. Because as a kid, I actually really liked it. No, immediately it shake not, your head. No, no, no not no. even close. No, because I mean, on the movie. surface, you're like John Leguizamo, though. John Leguizamo yeah. doing a bad job of anything seems entertaining still. It seems that way. <laughs> but but no. I was not in tune to like plot or anything at that point. No, I was just as a kid. excited about things from a video game. But yet there were no elements of the actual game in the movie. Now that you mention it, I think it I was, was like really gang- disappointed. It was like about a gangster that. film, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, they like Koopa went was to the... like a mafia boss. Yeah, pretty much. But they all—it was the alternate pipe reality where they all evolved from dinosaurs. Yeah. And, uh, they did have the little bob bombs. So that was in the no movie feathers, from the though. game. Yeah. Yeah, no no fly- No, they had the jumping boots. Oh, yeah, those were jump. cool. Yeah. But overall, no. No. Did you know that there's an actual psychological principle uh, behind remembering things fondly that you didn't enjoy at the time? That's part of why a lot of people remember high school like it was really fun, even if they were like, miserable at the time. Mm-hmm. And why it's been a constant struggle for me to remind myself that high school sucked. Yeah. Um, so well, I don't that's why just, the like, whole country wistfully. remembers the 1950s so fondly. Yes! Seriously, when it was fucking not great at all. <laughs> that's, that's what I think has happened with me in that movie. And that I just, I'm afraid to actually watch it and pop that bubble. I don't know, that's like, a, that's like a pastime of mine, is just watching really terrible movies. Nice. I don't know, it's fun. But we gotta, we gotta get old hologram hopper. Or rather, we'll edit him in. Yeah. We'll get the rights. We'll talk to his um, 
the family. The estate. Yeah. The estate, exactly. Mm-hmm. Those guys, the estate guys, they're already in it. I, I talked to them just now. They're in it. You're a very fast uh, casting representative. What can I say? I know how to make deals. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the villain, and he actually trapped everyone into a Saw game inside Beyonce. Um, and it doesn't make sense just like Saw. Uh, there's just, you know, you got to find some keys, dodge some spikes. Uh, saw blades. Saw for your own tail. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> escape, escape tail. the trap. Going in there because he's a shark. <laughs> I didn't I'm get glad past you're me. Along. <laughs> I love it. And then Beyonce wakes up. That's it. And, That's it, and it was all a dream, but yet it, it actually <laughs> still happened. So yeah, much. yeah, she had a dream of the movie, but the movie actually happened. It's just a big coincidence. Yeah. It's really That's weird. because. The exact part of her body that they were in were her, was her brain. Yeah. So she was actually watching it from the inside of her own eyeballs. Yeah. While she slept. Exactly. Wow. That's it's hot. Yeah. She, and she looked good doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Brad Pitt wins the Nobel Prize after all. Aww. So wait, who was Brad Pitt again in this movie? He was the he was the guy who invented the technology to shrink everyone um, down. Does he have any other role in the movie besides that? No. <laughs> I mean, right. he could. Yeah, he could do whatever you know, he want. I don't no. think we need the complications. They, as they go throughout adventures, they keep bumping into, like, bulkheads with buttons that then project a little hologram of him, like, ex- oh. exposing plot elements to keep the story <laughs> going. <laughs> Just like, what, like the floating head guy in uh, Power Rangers? Yeah. Yeah. Or rather, the floating head guy in uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Zombie? Yeah, Mecha Lecha High, Mecha Heine Heine Ho. Mm-hmm. He's in the movie, too. <laughs> Jombie or the actor who played Jombie? Both. Yeah. But it's a different guy playing Jombie. <laughs> so there's Jombie played by a different person, but we got the actor that plays Jombie, and uh, he plays the president <laughs> of the United States. Who just happens to be at an airport in Arizona. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Both wear a turban now. Hmm. Right? We need every race as president. And in this At movie, same time. The, yes. the president over with. the president is also a floating head. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, in a jar, totally. In a, in a fancy box with the weird lines. That's the thing. Of everything that I really paid attention to as a kid of that show, the fact that when the doors opened up on his little thing, the like space between the doors was this like jagged line mm-hmm. instead of a straight line like in a normal door frame, that was fucking amazing to me. I just was like, wow, look how the joint comes together. Whoever made that prop really, like, they cut that out well. It's not binding at all. It opens cleanly every time. That was just, I was really impressed with that. Way to go, Pee Wee's Playhouse prop guy. Yeah. Was, <laughs> this one's for you. Totally. I love it. You guys, we're nearing the end. No. <laughs> but why? I think we've... Uh, We've got at least one other sponsor thing to read. And, oh no, that's Spunk Lube. I got uh, one over here. Or do you want it, Waz, because it's your favorite one? You really do this one justice. Okay. Alright. And you have another one over there, too, right? I do. <laughs> oh, this, well, yeah, I do this one justice because I freaking love this product. Hangover Joe's Recovery Shot. I love this product because I like to just drink it, even without alcohol involved. And it gives me, like, the warm kind of energy where I'm not all wacky. I'm just, like, smiling. Uh, Hangover Joe's recovery shot is very effective because it rapidly puts back some of the key ingredients necessary to relieve a hangover and promote recovery. More specifically, it moisturizes the crap out of your cells. You get some of those cactus juices in there, and all your cells are like, mmm, they get all moist. And when your brain is moist, it's not all swelly, and you don't have a headache as much. Um, Only the freshest, most pure ingredients are used. Uh, Hangover Joe's is easy to use. It's very, very easy to use. Most liquids in a bottle that you unscrew the top of the bottle are extremely easy to use, convenient to carry around, and very inexpensive. They've been a proud sponsor of Radio Vegas Rocks and the Rock and Comedy Show for years, and that's because it really works. We get drunk and drink that shit all the time. Get up, get moving, get back into the party. Visit hangoverjoes.com. All of those words are spelled like you'd expect, or just Google it, Hangover Joes. 
they were officially affiliated with the Hangover movies even. They're that big of a deal in the Hangover recovery industry. The end. If they were affiliated with the Hangover movies, wouldn't they have canceled them out? In oh, fact, they man. canceled out their affiliation with the... <laughs> so, wait. Oh, so how many hangover, hangover movies were there? Uh, Three? I think so. Is that because the fourth one got canceled out by the Hangover Joes? <laughs> they finally hangover figured it out. Juice? They're like, hey guys, we can just drink this. Yeah. It, That's it, the movie. It was more of a, a short. Ruined yeah. the movie, yeah. so the affiliation had to be disconnected. Yeah. It, it was like a 12-minute short before Coco. People yeah. stopped getting <laughs> hangovers, and they stopped watching the franchise yeah. at the same time. Hangovers cured, thanks to Hangover Joe's. Check. It, it's like Next. measles, except it's not coming back because of anti-vaxxers. <laughs> Why do I have to take the sponsors to a dark place? Like Every, every time. <laughs> Let's just do it. It's like polio, except it's not coming back because of anti-vax. Okay, what's your... <laughs> oh, mine. Oh, you didn't mind. Hey, listen up! I want to tell you oh. again about Pinche's Tacos. Did you know their mission is simple? To provide you the best taco experience by using high-quality meats and seafood, fresh garden vegetables, handmade tortillas, and high-quality artisan breads. Well, it's true, and we have told you time and time again here at RadioVegas.rocks just how amazing the food is. It's super amazing. But the atmosphere is awesome. The staff is super friendly. They have happy hour from 3 to 7. 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. At least. Not just any. 3 to 7. If you go in the morning, you're going to be sorely disappointed. 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Check out Taco Tuesday. And mention us when you order a blood orange margarita. And you will get a free gringo taco. Visit pinchestacos.com for a location near you. The thing about Pinche's Tacos that makes them great is the food eating the food their food isn't just great to look at and it doesn't just smell good but when you eat it that's when you really experience the the best things about it you mean to tell me you can actually eat the food that the restaurant serves you in fact that's what i recommend doing most i have their no products. idea unlike other restaurants yeah. yeah you're just like this is pretty i'll instagram it and then you just leave you mean to tell me i've been going to tony roma's every friday for the past five years and i could actually eat those things <laughs> what things specifically at tony roma's steaks that's where you go that's why you go sometimes you get them with grilled shrimp on top nice I thought which i a- imagine tastes great <laughs> But if they made it clearer to the customer when you enter, perhaps yeah. saying you could eat this. By the way, this is, this is for your mouth. <laughs> this is not just for looking at. This is one of those looking at restaurants. I, I just take a picture of it and then leave. Well, I'm so used to going to the arts and crafts store and getting model food from my dollhouse that it's just I got confused about the situation. How big are your dolls? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? We well, if they're the same size as your dolls, maybe we maybe we can get them together. We're yeah. gonna have like a little doll arranged marriage. A little spunk lube party. <laughs> <laughs> well, the great thing about uh, spunk lube with dolls is it just it goes a lot further, proportionate mm-hmm. to size. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a, a can of the uh, cinnamon variety that I'd love to uh, give give a nice uh, shot at. Yeah. Now, cinnamon spunk Tastes lube. like Big Red. That sounds fucking great. Like, real talk, I'm, I'm going to stir up a batch of that later and have myself an experience. And I recommend you all do, too. We're going to report back. Now, there's many things we've talked about Hashtag reporting back. Hashtag cinnamon lube. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that sounds like a legit good time. I think we really learned and grew together yeah. uh, as people. I think we we've experienced personal growth and satisfaction within our individual lives but also i want to bring up another thing that we've asked everyone to report back on uh not this episode but in previous ones and that's that earlier we asked everyone to drink from each of the faucets in their house and make us a chart comparing the flavors i'm not going to let go of this until i get some charts i'm not just going to let this one pass as some flippant thing i just say i want to see some charts i love fucking love charts especially if they're about water flavors of the different faucets i know not every faucet in my house tastes the same and i think that's something that americans should be aware of we live in this country where the government says hey we've got drinkable 
tap water throughout the whole nation where this amazing first uh, first world nation where all the tap water is drinkable. Except in even Flint, though, Michigan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Except in Flint, Michigan. And there's other countries. There's other countries. There might as well be countries within this one. There's other places also that have had um, uh, horrible things found in the drinking water, lead pipes and all that in the infrastructure of the city. And the population of this country is buying and drinking bottled water. There's whole industries about getting water into our homes besides the tap water. I think that lends some like uh, some knowledge about its relative drinkability so it's I the bathtub people, faucet yeah yeah it's, if the faucets taste different how drinkable is it really gets that's how we're getting woke you guys wake up on your tap water and make me pretty charts and this is i just like charts is really what this is about but it's activism too kind of so <laughs> if you're trying to find something to be an activist about but you don't really want to like commit that hard help me out with some chart on this <laughs> Chart me up. Yeah. It's the bathtub faucet. Spoilers. Yeah, it's usually the bathtub's the yummiest. It's, yeah. Or like when you're really thirsty, but you hop in the shower because you're also sweaty because you just didn't prioritize your day right, mm-hmm. and you're drinking it from the so shower out you, and the little the little streams are poking at your tongue, yeah. and it's in your it's getting your eye weird. It's like it kind of tickles, yeah. makes you want to like itch your tongue too, but you're trying to get the water in yeah, there. It's a little uncomfortable, but you kind of like it too. Yeah. And you're urinating on yourself at the same time. Well, you want to try to pee on your feet while you're doing this. And eating your shower toast. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Indeed. You See, watch- we're wrapping things up. Yeah. This it is sounds a, a like we're joking around, but this sounds legit divine. Like, if later I went into the shower with some toast, and I drank, I washed that toast down from the faucet, but, because, you know, when you're drinking a liquid while you're peeing, this is enjoyable. I, I always take a beverage into the bathroom with me when I go to the bathroom, because I want to feel like, I want to feel the whole circle of life mm-hmm. occurring <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. I want to feel like I'm taking out what I put in. Just like in with mother, like when you go camping, and you're not supposed to like you leave only footprints. I want that experience, uh, in the in the tub. Yeah, and <laughs> if you happen to be a uh, mad scientist that needs to put a hammerhead shark inside of Beyonce, what better vehicle than the shower toast? Boom. This is why that product is sponsoring this movie. What did we name? What was the main name of it again? Lodon. Lodon. Pre mega. Lodon. In parentheses. Mm-hmm. Lodon. Uh, subtitle The Search for Life Beyond the Future of Tomorrow. But B is spelled B E Y. <laughs> beyond. Lodon. The Search for Life Beyond the Future of Tomorrow. Oh. Well. That's been a movie that's been great. I feel like the movie poster should have like the hammerhead shark Will Smith with his uh, Fresh Prince hat on, sideways. Yeah. Yeah. Also, he should be holding a CD, like, cause that's mixtape. really hip. He's like, yeah. He's also promoting his mixtape, <laughs> right? Totally. While trying like, to yeah. get his way out of the saw horror <laughs> challenge but within. You have, the you have to get someone Destiny's to, to buy your mixtape. That's the best the part is the, the little mixtape CD that he's holding up, gleaming, which has little text on it that says mixtape, even though it's clearly a CD. Yeah. And There's... a little hand-drawn fire emoji. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Just hand-drawn on the disc. Lord knows I've done that back in the day when I used to use physical media. But uh, the best part of it will be just the little glint. There's, like a, like a, there's going to be a glint on the CD and a glint on one of his teeth that just match. It's the same glint. Just really drives that feeling home. Isn't that like Best Buy is finally not going to sell CDs anymore? I thought the local one already didn't have a CD section mm. anymore. No, it's been like diminishing greatly for a lo- long time. But they're finally like, oh, hey, no one's buying these. You know what I enjoyed about that story? All the headlines said, Best Buy to stop selling CDs, semicolon, Target may also. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. It's almost it makes as you if think, they're right? yeah. chills for the perpetuating the idea that Target's real. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not buying it. No, that's fake news all day. Fake news that way. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to plug? It's nah. plug time. Shh, ain't plugging shit. Let's plug stuff that you did a while ago. 
<laughs> no, I wanted to mention on the air that like Greasy Conversation, the inception of it in a band, was actually highly inspired by one thing that you did at the Womb Room. Remember when you put a band together and everyone just played one note, but yeah. like really dramatically, just yeah. all about this one note? Mm-hmm. And it came off like a full on like music performance. But yeah. like I was on to that shit. I knew what you guys were doing. But it was great. I was like, I'm legit liking this. And seriously, we formed Greasy Conversation weeks later with me bringing up that concept of that happening. Like, I'm going to take it further, you guys. We're going to have, like, just one series of notes. It'll Three be notes. this one theme. Yeah. Yeah. Three notes. <laughs> Shit. Sometimes four. No more than 12 keys. Nah. <laughs> and also a talk show component. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no music on the talk show. <laughs> Except sometimes. I mean, it's like little bumpers. It's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. That was delightful. It makes yeah. my heart fill with joy. It's real. What was that called, that thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It was part of the Sacre Brute. Yeah, that was um, prehistoric slapstick. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was good. Yeah, you could find a recording of that online. Nice. Yeah. It was, was legit I decent. It. I had a good time with that. Um,. For how much, and part of it was how much fun everyone was having. Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was, everyone was having fun. Everyone was in key. Which, how hard is that if it's one note? You better be fucking in key. So uh, that, that was important to me. It yeah. wasn't, it, there, was, there was at least some rules, some, some boundaries there. Mm-hmm. And the, the sacred brute thing, I don't think enough people got that that meant sacred noise. And also sounded like a French excla- exclamation. Yeah. I think that well, just I, went I, I over a really, lot of heads. I didn't really explain it. You so. shouldn't have had to. Uh, uh, yeah. Like I was really, you know, I was up for the googling, and the googling was rewarded. I, I like to have a research component in yeah. any artistic project that I'm involved totally. in. <laughs> Do your homework. Well, kids. <laughs> Daddy's watching. <laughs> That's a perfect place to tie a knot uh, into a bow on top of this little show box. But before we go, I want to remind you that the ads that are going to play next significantly benefit us. They're not just like some sound of some dude talking to make it sound like we're cool enough to have sponsors. We're like, check it out. This sounds like a real ad, right? These are actual ads. And if you call these numbers for any of these things like earlier, credit score, you should know what your credit score is anyway. You call them, you bug them. Mine's seven. Yeah. (laughs) Seven and a half over here. Ballin'. So you find out what that is, and you mention to them that RadioVegas.rocks sent you, and they hook us up back. Don't just bug these people just to bug them. Leave a little breadcrumb back to RadioVegas.rocks, and not only will they treat you better, because they'll know who sent you, and that their buddies at RadioVegas.rocks want you to have the special RadioVegas.rocks treatment, but they kick us back a little bit of money, even if you just talk to them and say, hey, maybe not today do I need your service, but... Um, I'm really happy I learned about uh, tax stuff I can do or low-cost airlines that I can get a hold of now because of you. Uh, That happened. We get money. You win. Everyone screams and cries with joy in the streets for the rest of their lives because of this. And on that note, this is Greasy Conversation, the talk show, season one finale. We will see you next week for season two. commercial that I triggered, clearly. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't cut off the phone number of the commercial, and all these commercials tell what they're about a good couple times, so. Practice makes perfect, everybody. If, I, if anyone learns anything from any of this, it's that uh, you have to do things a lot of times badly to get good at them. If you ever do, and what's really important is that you do them at all, and that your heart is in the right place and that people learn and grow and love one another together uh, over the horizon into their inevitable futures. Which is death. Yeah. Eventually you die from fucking have a great time of loving one another. Until no, you don't. Because people will remember you. You just lose autonomy.
Oh, you guys, wasn't that a great one? Have another one. It's so delicious. Talk to these people because they're helpful to everyone forever. If you are trying to quit drinking or doing too many drugs, oh, okay, so <laughs> so you know me and we'll never meet. I had a problem the like is, I drank and used to We might eventually dodge, but it's only our autonomy that we're losing. What we left life. behind I still is alive to everyone that experienced it. Problem so if we're totally good and excellent to each other, you then there's this legacy of our names associated with goodness. There's just no new decisions being made. You're not going to be up to anything Treatment your advisors. autonomy is gone, They'll but your essence into a is going to carry on to as if you're alive, as long as you can totally change your life. And your if name. you have PPO, private health insurance, the entire program <laughs> may be covered. <laughs> Fix your problem right now, before it gets any worse. Get clean. Call now we and learn comments? more. 800-961-2480. Good point, there's a few more. 800-961-2480. 800-961-2480. But people deleted their comments. Or maybe it's hiding some. Oh, no, it's hiding a bunch of them. That you guys, lots of awesome comments in the video feed. I thought people were commenting and then deleting them, but it turns out it only shows, like, the top comments. <laughs> you have to, like, click something to see more of them. But totally thanks, Megan. And thank you. Oh, shoot. Other people that commented. And one more juicy commercial to give them a call and tell them you love them. Radio Vegas Rock saying the following story is fiction. Woo boy, I had a rough night's sleep. <laughs> Literally call this company and tell you that you love them. According to our records, you owe the IRS thirty-seven thousand nine hundred. I'm sorry for the video feed kept going. It, it, it cuts off hard at two hours with Facebook. Uh, really? Yeah, uh, unless they change that. Uh, well, well, yeah. Part of me says you want my trailer. You can go ahead and have it. I only got a hundred bucks in the bank anyway. But so here's what I did. I called me the tax doctor. I paid them their fee, and I got the whole thing reduced to one thousand dollars. If you owe the IRS any personal or business taxes well more than ten thousand dollars you can call yourself the tax doctor right now see if they can save you some real money 800-917-8546 you gotta go big you wanna dial eight one four five six once more call tax doctor I have all my finances done by a Jewish cowboy out on the range. Oh, no. His handwriting is terrible from riding the horse, but <laughs> his work he's ethic is shakes. unparalleled. <laughs> well, no, he's doing it on a horse. Yeah. So unless that horse is going nice and slow, it's practically illegible. And the steadiest hand in the West. <laughs> that looks pretty steady. I shoot with this hand. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Uh, is it running? Maybe ask where are the cookies. I, I on this I can Who see has? more of the more of the things. Wait for. Me. Don't make me fail at pronouncing his name correctly again. The drummer of Bounty Hunter Brothers. You're still broadcasting, right? Yeah. I think you should go for it. Just try one. Rami? Rami. Romany. I Rami. say I say Rami, but I have no confirmation that that's the correct way of doing it. I, I could remember how William said it. How did he say it? Behind camera, I'm struggling right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said Rami. Did he? <laughs> no, see that doubt creeping in? I like Rami, because that sounds powerful. <laughs> but if, what if it's Rami? That's probably what his grandmother calls him. I don't think his grandmother calls him at all. No, with that attitude. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Cody. Hi, Justin. Hi. Oh, I said hi to you already. All right. Um, hi, Daniel. All right. That's enough. Everybody, go be excellent to each other and other people nearby. <laughs>